How's it going, everyone? This is Dr. Hefe playing more Disco Elysium, the final cut. It's snowing today. And yeah, I've been, uh, been a little bit under the weather these past few weeks. So hopefully my voice is not too affected by it. But yeah, last time when we left off, I believe we were going to speak to these two gentlemen right here. We're trying to pass some time so that we can uh, get rid of this minus one to our authority. We have to prove our authority to Titus Hardy. Apparently, he won't respect our authority unless we can prove it to him. But we haven't even talked about authority. We haven't gone into this in a long while. I know we've done most of these little traits, but... Yeah, we haven't we haven't gone back here in a while, and I don't believe we have done authority yet. Authority. It's cool for leaders. Experts of psychological warfare and respect junkies. That makes sense why we need to show Titus our authority then. Authority urges you to assert and reassert your dominance over those around you. It enables you to understand the power dynamics of groups of thugs. That, that sounds like the Hardy Gang. Know how far you can push a perpetrator and how to establish control of situations. At high levels, authority demands respect. Even a perceived slight could send you into knee into knee breaking mode. Okay. Got it, got it. With low authority, however, you're forever in awkward situations. Like when you suffer psychological breakdowns after you yell at teenagers and they laugh at you. Yeah, we definitely had a psychological breakdown by failing to establish our authority. So yeah, we may even need to level this up uh, if we fail, but hopefully, hopefully we don't. He doesn't deserve, he doesn't deserve anybody. Let's go have a chat with this guy. How's it going, buddy? You okay? Tease shit ain't nothing to me. Well, fair enough. All right, gentlemen, how's it going? What are you all That's doing over no here? Shame. Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. This guy has a very strong accent. Rene, you are a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, alright? I mean, whatever game you're playing, I don't know. The weather is very inclement for it. Look in his hand, going into his mouth. The sandwich, it's hauntingly beautiful. What? Is the sandwich full of drugs? I never thought electrochemistry would be so excited about a sandwich. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. Bunch of ass grabbers. <laughs> These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. All right, ball That's time. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath asking about the game. They wouldn't know anyway. They're way past their prime. All right, acting without hesitation. That sounds like our guy. Give me that green juice of success. You all ready? You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You make it work. God, this is right. You feel the familiar tremble of excitement and adrenaline that precedes every victory. Time has frozen. Electrochemistry, whenever you're talking about victory, I get a little bit of anxiety beating deep within my chest. It's almost squeezing my heart. The excitement and adrenaline, yes, yes, that precedes every victory. I, I, I don't know if it's victory that I feel. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your Oh, neck. there's our friend hand-eye coordination. Probably a sponsored ball. This is a very interesting picture Yours would for that. only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight. The nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball. The man is ball. Ready. The man ball is ready. This is truly what goes through the minds of shot putters every time. They're like, I am the man ball. 
A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. Union of All man sounds, and ball. smells, even the wind. Everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. West Great. in the Grand Couron area, a sharp overhand left from Arsene Luc Edelbrock sends the Samaran heavyweight champion, Koistia Miasnok Koistinicha, flying to the mat. The crowd goes wild. Revachol loves the heroes. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we're feeling like a boxer right now. Whenever all these like little red physical powers come online, I'm a little bit afraid. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Behold the fear and confusion reflected in the eyes of the two feeble geezers. Oh, they those are poor old men. Superiority. You are a god to them. Those poor old men, they're just trying to have a little game right here on his little cap. Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that now. I guess we're beyond that now. We are a cop of the apocalypse. The inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet. Here we are. Ball was slightly invisible, but Meld! For dead Meld! What the hell is your problem? I'm sure he's very impressed. Not a weak tri triceps. Uh, that's for sure. I'm a god of track and field. Why would I have a problem with anything? I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. A man his age getting worked up like that. Better watch that blood pressure. Don't be a sore loser. It's still a fair game between you two. Second place is a podium position. We vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five bull. Uh, I thought it was shot, but... Well, it damn well isn't. It's petonk. You ruined a petonk game. We want our bull back. Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? Aw, look at this little no sweet done. guy. Of course there's arm done, you orange slug. You are as a goddamn bull. I don't have a bull, but will this do? We'll hold out the shot put ball. <laughs> We're going to get rid of their little bocce ball for a shot put ball. It's going to be so heavy, it's not going to work. Will this no, it will goddamn not. Thank you, officer. This is really something. Honestly, I think it's better than our old bull, even. Wow. I am the law. Gaston Martin really wants to help me out. Uh, mon dieu. All right, all right, fine. What do you want, officer? Uh, let's see. Rene, I, how do we know his name? We haven't even been introduced to this guy. Do you know anything about the man hanged in the backyard of Whirling and Rex? Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has hey, passed me by snowing. completely. We can see all their bulls now. In Martinez, the union is the law. So can you really blame them? Cop is a pejorative term. Wow. I don't have a problem with policemen. He's telling On me contrary, that cop is a pejorative term. Sir, I am the police. I am the law. If I knew, I would not be afraid okay, to okay. tell this you. guy doesn't tell us. He's don't. got no information for man, us. Not a coward. All right. Today, you seem to be playing in a crater. No, We're just me. passing some yes. time here. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar Does it have game. anything to do with all the bullet holes I've been seeing around? Yes. It was left by heavy artillery fire. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. Very interesting. Physical instrument? What, have you and electrochemistry been teaming up recently? It's a crater left by artillery. Well, we know why. There was a war here like 40 years ago. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. 
So did you use the artillery fire then? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. Mm. So he worked for the old king, the old suzerain, but he could not beat the communards. I'd, un I'd bomb this place too, that's hella messed up. Uh, why shell them here in Martinez? Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Apparently we don't know what a beachhead is. Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. That is true. We do know that la apartment building was apparently several stories tall, but after it got shelled, it came down to two stories. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. Uh, we'll nod thoughtfully to act as if we know what he's talking about. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Wow, that is a grim way to play your game. You know, I don't feel so bad about shot putting one of your balls now. Blood ground. You got old René going there, like he isn't hungry enough already. Yeah, okay. This explains all the war damage. We know all about the war. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. And he's strangely happy. Also, his shots are pretty nice. If you haven't been watching his little maneuver, his endless maneuver of shooting his ball. Oh, he's eating a sandwich. He like hits this one, bounces off this one, and then like rolls it right in here. Yeah, here he goes. One, two, three. Perfect, perfect maneuver. He approves of this radical approach. Knows it was necessary. Half light. You did help me punch out. What's his name? Measurehead. So I kind of understand you, but I feel like also you tricked me into trying to punch Kuno like a twelve-year-old kid. So. I don't know the about you. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your home. There we go, our breakthroughs fall. coming in. You, we, the coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course, they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? <laughs> you know what I think. I think about making my one dollar a day. What are these called? They're not real, right? One... Maybe it is a real. Kami's just don't understand how money works. No, they don't. It is real, okay. It had to be the coalition. After eight years of fighting rabbit commies, boiling cats for food, and drinking piss in the mountains. Wow, you were an insurgent for eight years? That... That's quite dedication, man. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Fussel had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. This guy is a hardcore royalist right here. Instead, all of that is just holy. And beautiful in the world was wiped away and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio he is definitely a reactionary person right here that is for sure does not want the times to have changed at all this is just what the commies wanted this was the plan all along this is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. Okay, enough of this. We already know about Frisell and Guillaume. Didn't we? I feel like when we got our reality lowdown, we learned about it. The suzerain is the king. Has everyone <laughs> forgotten already? <laughs> they forgotten already. We've forgotten already. Who was the king? He got overthrown, right? D 
dude, I was just listening to some classical Russian music, and I was just thinking, man, this was written during the time when Russia was ruled by a czar, before the communist revolution, before Lenin and Stalin and all of them, and now we have our current day Russia, which is, you know, even different from that, and it's, yeah, times have changed, all within, what, less than 100 years, about 100 years? A little bit over a hundred years, but yeah, yeah. Who knows what we'll see in our lifetime? It's no use talking to you. You were still in Daddy's balls when it happened. I mean, fair enough. When I mean, we took how can you blame me? I was still in Daddy's and balls. Rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Through the bull in the sea, we do not know anything about this old soldier. Oh, we're going to bust out a gun. Is there anything you can tell me about this rifle? It's a Bell Magrave. 4.46 caliber. Bridge loading. Crevachal made. Good weapon. Accurate and reliable. Man, imagine just whipping out like an M1 Garand. Some old school weapon from World War... Was that World War One? M1 Garand? Someone will let me know in the comments. I feel like if you're watching this, you're probably a very knowledgeable person. You got a big brain, a big brain kind of viewer. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? <laughs> what do you mean? This is my rifle. Yeah, I will tell him. It was in the basement. I'm not surprised. There are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here. Back in the day, everyone had something stashed away. I'm trying to compare this to like other European countries. I feel like in America, people have guns stashed away everywhere, but I don't know if that's true in European countries, like around the turn of World War I. I think nowadays there's not guns stashed everywhere, but a hundred years ago could have been different. As for the rifle, I don't know what else to tell you. These BM446s are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, now we can ask him about the guard booth. Now that he's given us a lowdown on the history of the world. Yes. The Debardieu's union pays me to stand vigil during the night. Not out of any political allegiance, mind you. That actually is kind of weird. Why would a communist union hire someone who is obviously such a reactionary and does not agree with their views at all? Like, he, as a night guard... Like, I could see as something else, but as, like, a watchman? Doesn't seem like he would be one who would really care if someone came sneaking in in the night. I'm an old man. Don't sleep more than a few hours every night All right, anyway. this is and not true. Money is tight. This is the truth. Money is tight. As you get older, you still need sleep. This is a myth. A myth perpetuated by our society. It is harder to sleep as you age, which is why... The elderly don't get as much sleep, but that does not mean that they don't need as much sleep as you and I, who are young. Uh, yeah, you must have seen something on the night yes, of the murder. Yes, it does. Unfortunately, I wasn't working that night. Been on a two-week leave since last Monday. So, who was working your shift then? No one. The bus has been on man since last Monday. There's no other guard. It's just me. Oh, man. And I guess he doesn't get money, either. Hey, I got one real for talking about how communists don't know about money. Do you want it, bro? I'll help you out. No one has been guarding the container yard since last Monday. Yes. It's... It's not actually an issue. I mean... Look, officer. The container yard doesn't actually need a guardsman. Never had one before, honey. Monsieur Claire had that booth built specially for him. It's mostly decorative. Hey, that's like still a pretty nice way of allowing your senior citizens to feel useful and to earn money. I mean, not as cool as actually giving out socialized welfare, but knowing a guy like this, he may not even be down for some welfare at his age if he's so against anything that comes close to communism. I mean, but it's not even... Anyway, let's not go down that path. The possibility of someone being in there is enough to discourage any ill-minded individuals. Evra created this job for René because he knows the Royal Carabiniers' pension of honor and PTSD 
even something a man can live off. Pension of honor and PTSD. Damn. Damn. Reflects bad on the war neighborhood. His words. Yeah. All right. Where's our money? Should rent out his service, invest the profit, get few more guys, expand and repeat. Wage work is a dead end. Yo, we're we're a real hobo cop though. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with tear collecting. It's my side thing too. Proudly hold out the tear bag. Oh, hell yeah. I didn't mean to imply there's something wrong with that. I do it too. Everyone does it. It's an excellent side thing. You know what? I used to collect all of my recyclables. Uh, my parents did. And we would go take it in. We'd get like, you know, 20 bucks from the recycling center. We'd like take a bunch in because my parents, they used to buy bottled water. Yes, I know. Bottled water. It is not the future. Uh, but that's what they used to do back in the day. It wasn't me. It was them. And we go recycle all those bottles and get like 20 bucks and then just go like to the ice cream store and like buy a bunch of ice cream. It was nice. It was a nice little side thing. Yes, yes, yes. Can we conclude the topic of my gout boost now? Sure, let's talk about this picture. Who's the girl? She is nobody. This is none of your concern. And I refuse to discuss my private affairs with the RCM. Oh, come on. I thought you were all about talking to the police. What the happened? Lady is Jeanne-Marie Beaulieu. And she sure as hell wasn't a nobody. A secret task. Ooh, Jean-Marie Beaulieu. Wait, how come we can't have more information about yes, it? Yes, yes. Like I said, it would be up anyway, so might as well keep an eye out. It keeps my senses sharp. I guess we'll get a little bit more information about Philippe the Third. Ah, yes. King Philippe the Third on his steed. A reminder of what Revachel once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. See, that's what they don't tell you in the history books. How many of those world leaders around the turn of the century, like in the 1900s, are just doing cocaine like crazy? Like, that's what Freud, that's what he was advising to his patients. Not only to the patients, but also to doctors as well. You gotta do the cocaine. It's, it's healing. It's helpful. You know, it wasn't until later they realized the, the drawbacks of cocaine, the cocaine psychosis, as they called it. So... That's that's the real history you want to read about. All of those kings and queens that were just doing the riding the white lightning. Cocaine. Cocaine. Um, <laughs> oh, electrochemistry like just jumped in. And just imagine what kind of cocaine a king would have had. Oh, the best kind. The super power, feared and respected. <laughs> a testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. Yeah, but the cocaine. Tell, tell me more about that cocaine. Oh, old Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy. Purple nose the candy. Loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> His egocentricity is borderline legendary. Purple cocaine? Purple cocaine? This is... A, what? I feel like I need to look this up right now. Is this a real thing? Someone will let me know in the comments because if you're watching this video, you're probably a cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> oh, probably not. Probably not. Let's let's not say that. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? Yeah, of course. It's just like uh, the president. They can do cocaine, right? It's all good. That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine, mm -hmm. clarity of vision, to aid in their work. Regnum cocainum, Revachal's finest years. Cocainum, regnum cocainum. My goodness, that is like, it's it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful idea. It's like a band name. I was going to say a company name, but that could be a little bit, maybe not in this day and age. But this is a great <laughs> combination of words. Regnum cocainum. I'm satisfied with this explanation. I, oh, I'm glad you are, Electrochemistry. This would be a great title of the video if I wasn't using, uh, you know, people's names and the little traits that we have. Of course. Clarity of vision. 
awareness. Philippe Zito was even brought into this world with the done. help of cocaine. A drink of Coco made the Prime Minister the dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was able to connect with higher realms. Higher realms. We're going to talk about those higher realms. Please, officer, don't encourage him. Do spare us the cocaine fairy tales. The RCM isn't interested in them. Dude, maybe this guy could hook us up with some meth. Isn't that one of our... Our goals today, find speed and sniff it. How are you going to find some speed? Yes, indeed. We're not here to investigate the drug trade of centuries past. We're here to participate in the drug trade of centuries past. But imagine, purest, purest cocaine. cocaine. Now that would make you feel like a king. Not that you can afford it, but what about speed? Speed is cheap and good. Where are we going to get it? I don't know any speed dealers. I don't want to talk more about True Kings. Right. I think we're done here. Thank you. F I will thank him for his time. We know about his job. We could possibly get this. Yeah, 4 plus 11. Thank you, sir. Oh, we have a, a little As yellow you dot. A bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Cool. <laughs> so cool. Where is it coming from? From a distant sunset, a stage light, flash photography, nowhere in particular. It's just what superstar law officers do they squint at lights and they saw no we're shit. not gonna go down to superstar we did that one in another playthrough we're an apocalypse cop not a superstar cop what are you deaf they're perfect like rock whoa star whoa i'm not gonna say i'm trash though drug addict yeah you have you're a big dick cop dick mullen big Salem dick Rocky cop Bayou. badass on the edge disco cop Time we are very disco. Fantasy world. Here we go. Camera. Lights. With a sudden Action. flash, the world freezes around you. And you along with it. In an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. I guess there's no harm in taking one of those thoughts on. You don't have to actually incorporate it in. Unlike this one, The White Morning. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. I I wish you could like click over to what the original was. I kind of forgot what the original thing said. I know there was something about the little guy going away, which was giving us a minus one to authority. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop on the corner, and finally in a matchbox house, sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning, a modern death divorce or something similar all you can do is put more distance between you and him make him smaller make him less you oh so we gain zoom out distance and motorix cap increased by one okay well at least our authority has come back we can now increase our motorix even more so many skill points okay do we dare Oh, yeah, we can zoom out way far. This is almost disturbing how much far we can zoom out. Something about balls. Enormous bulls worthy of a real man. Okay, there. Okay. Let's see. Do we have, do we have our, our authority clothing on? I think so. None of this probably has any authority. No, I'm not seeing anything for it. Yeah, this would only be minus one authority. Okay, just gonna walk in here. You know what? Let's do it. Let's do it in this episode. Let's end this episode on a real high note. You know, we've had we had our filler episode last time. We were getting our reality low down. Let's uh, you know get the real tool that we need. <laughs> here we go. Good old pure holodon. How do I use it? Um, uses left six. How come I can't... How come I can't slurp it up? Oh, here it is, down here. Yeah! <laughs> I love it, he's just got his little, his little slurping sound. Hey, uh, don't worry about that. I'm just doing some good times right here. I got... My psyche is out of control. Look at my authority. 
respect my authority here, Titus. Probably should save, but we just won't put Looks the gun. Like the circus left him, but the we won't put the gun in our here. mouth this time. If we fail, let us establish our authority. Establish authority. Failure. Yes, authority. Feverish thoughts race through your mind. I'm the only thing keeping this town from going to hell. And you're not and helping! what exactly is it you've been doing that's so goddamn special? Shitting yourself in front of us. Going around. Harassing kids on the street. Kids who've done nothing wrong. Wait. Oh no, this thing looks out into the backyard. All the while talking racist shit. Don't think we aren't watching fascia. People here trust us. Yo. We're getting complaints. I don't think I've said anything racist. What's this guy talking about? Of course you have. You've been calling people kip left and right, inciting race violence in my town. What? I don't remember doing that. Kylie said they've been trying to set up a race rally, whatever the fuck that means, trying to get the kips out of Revishaw before the economy goes to shit. What the heck? That's not what I've been doing. This is an interesting one. I'm not racist. Just look at my partner. <laughs> oh, boy. That would not go over well. All I care about is Revishal and its people. And if some foreigner... What the fuck? He just assumes this guy is a foreigner? No, no, no. There is... uh, that is a lie. What's he talking about? Sure there is. Kali said they're both purchasing confetti. Ribbons, too. And loudspeakers. And fireworks. Kali works at the carnival shop, you see. Get the fuck out of here, you racist carny. There'll be no race rally in my town. What happened? We got absolutely wiped. Let's go before it gets worse. What's going on? Are you racist now? Is the rally real? Please don't set up any rally. It'll make you look awful. Yeah, that would make us look awful. Where did he get that from? Our morale is getting severely damaged here. Okay, we're gonna pump it up. This is why we've had these skill points. We're waiting, we're waiting Looks to like get in here. The circus left him, but the clowns are still here. All right, we got this. We got it this time. Now we have a 58% chance, even greater than even. Here we go. As yeah, look at that big 11, baby. Sweaty, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco. Does this look familiar? I don't know. Does you believe it look the place was called Precinct 41. It was also filled with almost exclusively men sitting on desks, talking shit and wasting time. Hey, that's true. You seen Apricot, old Purdue's daughter, asks Lieutenant McCoy. Uh huh, replies Torson, the ass on that one. McCoy shakes his head in appreciation. A bit strange the old man named her Apricot, but, I mean, who am I to judge? Wanna hit the kebab joint? Dude, I could go for a kebab. That's for real. I get it, Titus. You guys really are the authority around here. Oh. You must be. You're just like real cops, drinking beer and sitting around with your dicks in your hands. You got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. <laughs> I'm drunk on the job, too. No, I'm also a big fan of beer and jerking off instead of helping people. You saying we don't help people? I've been doing this job for 10 years. Martin Ace was a dump before we put this outfit together. They don't know, man. They weren't here. We had three shootings a week, kids dead, fucking graffito everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffito removal. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. Damn, Kim. Kim slicing deep. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. Don't let him drink that. One more push. Quick. It's not about who did it. It's about the victim. She needs help. Titus? She stops mid-sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up. 
but on his terms. Yeah, authority. Yeah. Yes, he's coming in clutch. You want to help her, cop? Fine. I'm going to let you help her. But you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her. A freight train of pain, buddy. Dude, I'm so chill right now. I'm just... Did you just see me? I'm slurping up some pure holodone right here, man. The world is on fire. What is her name? And I'm loving it. Glossia. I'm on you. Glossia. She's staying here at the whirling in rags. A real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit. Blonde. That's I'm on you. With an O. U. Oh, we can get some more information. Let's get some more information, then we'll end the episode. Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's their relationship. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. And when did the rape happen? He did it before we killed him. He's not gonna do it again. So what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. Yeah, thank you, Kim. Very logical. All right. Two weeks, maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. Here you go, boss. Here you go, boss. Oh, Glenn. And what was your relationship with her? I know her. How well do you know her? <laughs> oh, Kim! Well enough, copper. We party. We party. She's been here for a few months. He tries to make it sound real casual, but the muscles on his neck tighten. So she's not from around here then? You mean Revishal? Nah, she's an immigrant. Or a drifter of some sort. Been staying here over the winter. Don't you give her any more trouble. She's just had some bad luck, that's all. Shut up, Angie. She doesn't need your help. Titus gives them both a look. They fall silent. What's with all the silences? It's like these guys don't know how to feel about this. You should keep picking at it. Alright, suggestion. And what was up with the party and she and Titus did? It sounded fun. <laughs> it sounded fun. Alright, electrochemistry. You said you partied. What did you mean? What do you think I meant? <laughs> sex, drugs, karaoke. Sex, drugs, and karaoke? Yes. Yes. And no. Got something to say about it? So no karaoke. I mean, there's there's the issue right there. So you're saying the two of you were close? No, we just fucked. That's all. I'm not gonna give you any details if that's what you're after. So put your dick away. And there's so much talk about dicks and balls. This is a re Freud would be having a great time right here in his regnum cocainum. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're gonna get for now. Thank you. We'll talk Remember to her. Remember what I said. Freight train of pain. <laughs> they gave him some pretty good lines. They did. All right. I'll take off now. See you later, Titus. Glad we didn't have to resort to grabbing Kim's gun this time. Anyway. I believe we now have to go speak to the assault victim. Go upstairs and knock on door number three. So, we're on our way up there. Yeah, I think a pretty good episode. You know, we're actually getting forward in the, st in the story. We're slipping some pure holodon. We talked to some super reactionary royalist dude. We threw a ball in the sea like a freaking boss, even though it was like a bocce ball. It has another name besides bocce ball. Petonk, apparently. Yeah, and now we got to go interview somebody. So, yeah, pretty good. Pretty good day. Pretty good day overall. And we finished our little ability to zoom in and out. Not bad, not bad. We have our superstar. We're not going to do it. We're, yeah, we're not a superstar cop. We are a cop of the apocalypse. But yeah, if you enjoyed the episode, you can toss a like. And what the hell else am I supposed to say? Oh, yeah, you can subscribe for more Disco Elysium content. Until next time, do remember, as always, to take care of yourself and keep it disco, baby! Yeah.